Hello, this is Mark Beatty with Wayne House Research. Uh, today I'm joined by Bob Wise, who's the president of uh, freeconferencecall.com, and we welcome you to today's webinar. Uh, we're excited to uh, bring to you today some of the results that we've been able to get through a survey that we did. Uh, freeconferencecall.com sponsored Muted. survey that Wayne House Research did. Unmuted. That ran out to uh, both IT decision makers and also to the users. Um, so just a, uh, a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, you'll see on your screen uh, there's a, a Q&A button on the left-hand side, uh, an area to uh, ask questions. And um, we will ask questions at the end of today's uh, webinar, uh, but don't hesitate at any time to put a question in there and then hit submit, and then uh, we'll pick that up at the end and, uh, and answer as many as we possibly can. So the agenda today is uh, is pretty simple. Uh, the idea is to review what we learned in uh, this survey of IT decision makers and users, primarily at the large enterprise. I'll qualify what that means. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, how these services are being used in some businesses uh, today. Um, have an interview time with uh, with Bob Wise and talk a little bit about uh, the journey that uh, freeconferencecall.com has taken from primarily a consumer service uh, now to approaching uh, the the enterprise market. And then once again, as I mentioned, uh, we'll wrap up uh, with your questions and observations uh, at the end. So uh, welcome to today's conference. Uh, we we appreciate you taking the time to uh, spend with us today, uh, and uh, we'll get started right now. Right now. So the objective of this study really is is to understand both the IT decision maker and the end user's uh, behaviors and preferences in relation to free conferencing, but also to understand how they're using conferencing today. So we uh, had an online survey. We went out to basically half and half. Uh, half of the audience was actually a qualified panel. We went out to IT decision makers, and the other half uh, we went out to users, approximately 100 uh, respondents for, for each category. And the target really was uh, larger enterprises, uh, at least uh, 250 employees, uh, primarily located in North America. So just a quick review of the findings. Um, we were actually surprised. Or I, I should say I was surprised. Goodbye. Uh, one thing that Wayne House Research does is it tracks uh, the entire unified communications and collaboration market. Um, I haven't been really close to uh, what's been going on in the free market. So a combination of, of what I learned uh, in beginning working with freeconferencecall.com and also in the survey really struck me. Uh, one of the things that really struck me was the, the number of users that were familiar with free services out there in the enterprise. Um, and, uh, and the fact that they have been using it and also would consider using it for business. Uh, they also came back with a response that uh, their experience was either the same or the better, or better than uh, the, the paid services available to them. Uh, we also, this is not actually any that much of a surprise, but freeconferencecall.com was recognized as the, 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 most, uh, the most recognized brand, I should say. Uh, and most people discovered uh, free conferencing either by trial, I would assume by being, doing something online, or by referral. Somebody else was using it as an example. And many of us have seen this situation where we'll be involved in a, a nonprofit, a school situation, and someone will invite us into a free conference call, and they'll become familiar with that as well. And increasingly we're seeing that between business users as well. One thing that did surprise me was the rate at which IT decision makers are evaluating new conferencing services. Uh, quite a high percentage on an annual basis. Uh, we actually see organizations uh, reviewing and switching conferencing services as needed, usually every two to three years or so. But uh, the, the fact that they're continually assessing new services on an annual basis rather surprised us. The other point that, uh, that, that got us uh, was that uh, end users have a tremendous amount of pull as far as influence on uh, the decision for these new services. Uh, it's in association with the IT decision makers, but uh, the, the level of influence is, is, uh, is picking up to nearly equal to that of an IT decision maker. And while price is always an issue for any organization when they're buying services, uh, it's become a, um, a basic uh, table stakes right now. They'll evaluate a, a service based on a, the fact that, you know, is it equal to or better in price than other services that I've been getting? And the things that come top of mind really are, are, are quality and security and mobility integration as well. So cost is always there, but there's other things that, uh, that, are, that are top of mind because that's, that's just table stakes right now. So 
So one of the first questions we asked was, how do you participate uh, in either an audio conference, a web conference, or a video conference? How, how frequently do you, or how often do you participate? Uh, and as you can imagine, uh, a high percentage of uh, the participants in the study came back and said, hey, listen, you know, a high percentage daily. So if you look at this graph, uh, the dark bar on the left-hand side is daily. The second one over to the right is uh, two to three times a week. And then uh, as you go to the right, uh, once a week, and then it moves out to uh, once uh, multiple times a month or once a month or less than once a month as an example. But what you can see is, is that uh, uh, people are using actually all forms of media on a regular basis. Sure, audio conferencing wins out. That makes sense. More people are involved in audio conferences. But look at the high percentage, uh, two to three times a week, the second bar to the right from web conferences and also video conferences as well. So. Um, this is really interesting. And if you had taken the same survey uh, three, four, five years ago or something like that, you wouldn't have seen these results. You would have seen web conferences around 10 or 15 percent, uh, audio conferencing uh, equally or, or higher than it is right now, and, uh, and video conferencing uh, quite a bit lower, by about probably half or so. We also asked, uh, how do you usually connect to the call? Uh, so interestingly enough, one of the barriers to the use of audio conferencing is uh, the, the number of digits that you need to dial to get into the call, as an example. And so people have been uh, using a whole variety of ways to get into call. There's not one way. Now, obviously, most of us are very familiar with, I dial a toll-free number, and then I dial a pin, and then I get into the call. And our survey says 68% of the people you know, do that uh, on a regular basis, but they also use other ways to get into the call. Um, they're using uh, click to get into the, into the conference as an example. It's, an H, uh, it's, a, it's a URL inside their, 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 their calendar. Uh, but also they're dialing uh, toll numbers to get in. Uh, a lot of times people are understanding that, you know, why are we paying for a premium service when we aren't really even paid for that toll line? 42% saying that. Um, so uh, interesting results. Uh, these were, you know, basically check all that apply. So they, it doesn't add up to 100%, but it does show that people are getting into conferences in a variety of different ways, not just one way, not just the traditional you know, toll-free number access. And then we asked them, does it matter whether you have a uh, toll-free number uh, or not? And uh, the truth is 56% said, I prefer a toll-free number. Uh, in, in the North American market, uh, it doesn't really make much sense. Most people have a plan that, uh, that covers them for whatever they call uh, and for an unlimited uh, calling uh, across uh, the, the certainly United States and, and in most cases into Canada as well. Uh, if we break that down, uh, uh, basically the IT decision makers uh, said 47% said, hey, it makes no difference to me. And the end users uh, who aren't even paying the bill, they said 40% uh, said it doesn't matter to me. Overall, it was just 44% blend of um, it makes no difference to them. And then we got into uh, the inquiry of their familiarity with, with free services. Uh, and um, we asked them, uh, are, you, uh, are you familiar with these services? 59% said yes. Um, if you break that down to um, IT decision makers, 77% of the IT decision makers were, f were familiar with these free services, 41% uh, from the end user side. And then we asked them, uh, have you participated in a, in a free conferencing call? And um, the numbers are actually uh, pretty impressive here. Um, 82%, if you add up those two numbers, the two bars on the left-hand side, that's 82% saying they participated in a free conference call. And we gave them the option to say, hey, was that a business meeting or, or was that something else, like a nonprofit uh, organization, church, school, club, committee, et cetera? 73%, uh, I participated in a free conference call, uh, which was a business meeting, and 44% uh, in, in something else, uh, such as a nonprofit. And then we asked them about brands. We're looking for brand recognition here. Um, and uh, sure, there's a variety of other brands that came uh, up to mind as far as free services. Uh, there is a, a variety of uh, references to free conference call, and they actually have a couple different brands. So we combined all those uh, different brands into uh, free conference call, and uh, the, the vast majority of the people basically said, hey, you know, we, we recognize freeconferencecall.com specifically over all other brands. And then we asked them about their experience with free conferencing. Uh, basically, uh, we were asking about uh, the overall experience, uh, 
call access and entry, uh, the ability to interact with others on the call, making sure that you're not cut off as an example, and also the sound quality. And the, 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 the three responses really is, you know, was your experience better, uh, about the same, uh, or, or was it worse? And 91% uh, said uh, overall that it was about the same or better. Um, so uh, this this was uh, quite quite revealing to us as well. If you look at if you add up the basically uh, uh, better or about the same right across the board, 91% overall experience, 94% regarding call access and, and entry, 91% was uh, it was about the same or better uh, ability to interact with others, and sound quality about 88%. So overall, very uh, positive experience. So the first uh, half of that study that I just reviewed was a combination of uh, IT decision makers and users. Obviously, there's a few breakouts in there. Uh, we also uh, branched off and asked IT de decision makers uh, specific questions, uh, just themselves. And so uh, we asked them, how frequently do you evaluate services? And this is what I was referring to earlier, 45% saying they're evaluating new services uh, every every year, 38% uh, every two years. So that, that uh, gives you the idea that you know, they're always on the lookout for something. It doesn't mean they're actually switching brands or, or changing things up. It just means that they're, they're always looking for, for new services based on, on need, on, on price, on, on feature set. And then we asked them, uh, give us your top three uh, service-related priorities. And uh, obviously, the ones that come out today are security. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, we hear that uh, from uh, virtually every single organization. Cost is obviously really big in there, as is mobility. That makes sense, and quality. Um, so uh, we, we believe, as I said earlier, that you know, cost and price are kind of table stakes. Uh, people expect to get a good price uh, right now. Uh, and then the other things that kind of rise to the surface are really you know, quality, security, and mobility. And then we ask the question, if your audio conference services were provided for 50% less than the price of your current provider, would you consider moving to a new service? 51% said yes. 48% uh, said maybe, but I need to be convinced the new service is either equal to or better than our current service. But overall, 99% basically said yes or maybe based on prove it to me, uh, which was a pretty interesting response. And this is one that I, I specifically like quite a lot, and this is the influence uh, inside the organization between uh, the IT decision makers and the users in the line of businesses. And this is an IT decision maker basically saying that 45% influence from the end users on the decision of what they buy. So all of us are very familiar with bring your own device, uh, but uh, now what we're seeing is, is the concept of bring your own service, or in this case, bring your own conference uh, service. Um, and um, so uh, you know, when we think about uh, the products and services that uh, we're offering to the marketplace right now and the kinds of things that uh, people are buying, we understand that the users have a tremendous amount of influence about what the organization ends up using. Uh, so um, obviously IT has a, a little bit of an edge here, and they probably will for some time, and 55% uh, saying uh, you know, we, we've got uh, the majority of the influence, but uh, they themselves admitting 45% of the influence comes, comes from the, uh, the end users was really revealing to us. And then we decided we'd have a little bit of fun. Uh, so we had fun with, uh, with basically two questions. We said, tell us about yourself. How do you behave in meetings? Uh, the th three responses they had option for, I'm open and talkative. I share ideas. The second one is I, I openly share my thoughts and, and ideas, but only when I'm called upon, uh, or I just prefer to listen uh, more than I speak. Um, and this was across uh, both the users and the, the IT decision makers. And 72% uh, said, uh, I'm open and talkative, sharing ideas, et cetera. That's interesting. But then when you combine it with the second question that we asked, uh, if you could mask your ID and voice in a conference call and ask any question or make any remark without retribution, would you speak more in a conference call? And 58% said they speak more. That's a little whack because 72% said they already are speaking quite a lot. <laughs> so I, I was rather struck by that. 
Other responses is uh, tell a colleague uh, what I really think about their ideas versus side behind diplomacy, 42%. Tell a superior or a boss uh, how to better treat their staff, 34%. Share more personal stories uh, during meetings, um, 21%. And then uh, tell the colleagues to share a few less stories about their children, 20%. So I'd like to uh, bring in uh, Bob Wise now and, uh, and talk a little bit about uh, the, the journey um, conferencecall.com has had uh, over the last uh, 14 years. Bob, you with us? I am here, Mark. Thanks. Hey, Bob. Good, good to have you along. Uh, Thank you. Hey Bob, before we get before we get started, um, one of the things that uh, I did, uh, one thing that Wayne House Research does is that we collect data on about uh, 65, 70 facilities-based uh, audio conferencing providers worldwide. We do that on a quarterly basis and also go out to some on an annual basis. Um, Freeconferencecall.com uh, came to us and, and gave us their their volume, like uh, other providers. And uh, we matched it up against uh, all the other providers in the world. And they came out to number one, uh, number four, excuse me, number four by volume of minutes, uh, which uh, and this is on a worldwide basis. So that, that really struck me. And I think this, this opens up a, uh, a new story, uh, an opportunity for free, freeconferencecall.com from the standpoint of uh, sheer size and um, where they can go from here. So, so Bob, um, I was, I was hoping you would help us understand uh, Free Conference Call's journey over the last 14 years. What, what's been going on with the company from, from, from its origins to today? Sure. Well, you know, th through the infancy of it, I mean, it's a great story, but we obviously don't have enough time. There's, there's a lot that's gone on. But, you know, besides the fact that Dave Erickson, who's the founder of the company in the beginning, was answering phones from his bed at all hours of the night, you know, Free Conference Call really grew over the past 14 years with – you know, Dave putting the domain name, the freeconferencecall.com domain name on the greeting from the start when conference calls were pretty expensive, uh, you, you know, somewhat years ago. I mean, so a user would get an account. They'd invite an average, you know, five people or so. They'd hear the greeting and, 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 and you know, the, an account they, they, they would say is, you know, is that they'd ask their account owner, is this conference call really free? And the organizers will explain that they've never received a bill and have never paid anything, and then all those participants would continue would, would sign up. I mean, the company has literally was built on that you know that very viral model. And I'll tell you that even today, more than half of the you know new individual users or customers that sign up are doing so because they were a participant on a customer's call and they heard that greeting. You know, so the journey over the past 14 years really has led freeconferencecall.com to being able to provide a really high-quality, secure, global HD conference calling service. Every account that, that a customer gets, you know, ha has, has access up to 1,000 participants for free on their calls, 25 seats of online meeting uh, or web conferencing for free, in addition to, you know, all of the typical conferencing features that everyone's been expecting that are, you know, that, that are now all part of our free conferencing service. Um, you know, and then, you know, finally, I mean, so the, the magic in free conference call, you know, from not, you know, comes really not only from the fact that we own all of the bridging and technology, but in the way we connect those bridges and the, te and the telecommunication partnerships that we have globally. You know, at the start of the, at the start, when Dave started this company, you know, he decided to use, you know, basic toll numbers versus toll-free numbers. And you hit on this a little bit, Mark. I mean, other services are using 800 or 8 by 888 numbers. And, and why that makes a difference, especially today, is pretty, you know, again, you said this, but, it's, you know, pretty much everyone has unlimited long distance in their home or in their office, their mobile plan, or, or they're dialing in through a soft phone. Toll-free numbers really don't make any sense anymore for conferencing. Uh, and there's no real problem in asking participants of your conference call to dial in using a toll number because of that fact. You know, so, um, you know, th that, that's sort of how we believe, and that's sort of the journey that this journey has led us into now doing business through our free model in 55 different countries. You know, take, for example, a bridge in France and a bridge in the United States can both take the same access codes. Uh, so you can create a real geo-diverse conference that happens in both, com in both countries. 
We have three super pops in the U.S., one in London, another in Singapore, and a global ring that ties all of those five locations together. So it's been a long journey, but, you know, I'm, I'm very happy, you know, about where, where Dave has taken it from answering calls from his bedroom to where we are today. That's a great story, and I think most people wouldn't recognize the, the global touch uh, of, the, of the organization, so that's, um, that's revealing to a lot of people. Now, like many people probably on the call, and as we referenced in our study, uh, I've been involved in a lot of uh, freeconferencecall.com uh, calls based on exactly what you referenced, the fact that um, uh, I, was, uh, I was on a committee at the school, I was uh, associated with an organization or nonprofit, and I was invited to the call, and I became aware of it. And um, that's, that's my reference to, to the organization. But now I understand you're expanding to the enterprise. Um, what's your motivation for doing this? What's the background of that? Well, you know, some of that motivation comes from the information that we know that, you know, sort of we found out is very consistent with the survey that you did that said that, you know, 45% of those respondents, you know, they, they reevaluate their conferencing service provider every year. So we know there's an opportunity for us if we can if we can not only significantly cut costs but show them we have a very high quality service and support. Um, you know, historically, free conference call has gotten customers one at a time from our website virally through marketing, and and we're able to, and and we've been able to now create those business accounts from the many individual customers we had in single businesses or enterprise and bring them together. You know, today we're, we really do dominate in the startup world, the tech industry, you, all universities, government, and, and believe it or not, even certain financial, certain areas of, uh, of financial services and virtually every hotel chain. And, and I really don't run into too many people who are not familiar with the brand. But what's really interesting on that enterprise side that, that you mentioned is that when you look at, if I just took a, a sampling of the Fortune 500, we have a customer base in 490 of those, okay? And, you know, how, you know, historically, we haven't had the relationships with those larger enterprise customers. Now we're starting to and have made some significant progress. We started to go to those companies, talking to the owners of the conferencing and asking them to try freeconferencecall.com company-wide, explaining to them the number of users that they have inside their company who are using us today who are repetitive, recurring, and, 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 and happy customers. And so that whole um, strategy has been good for us. You know, I think further motivation is we know enterprises will not accept a lower quality conference call and collaboration service and expect a really high level of security and reliability. And, and really, that's where we come in. I mean, there's a tremendous opportunities for enterprises to reduce their costs significantly with, you know, without having calls over the Internet or exclusively through their own network to cut costs. We can give them what they've been getting with carriers and other conferencing serv service providers. Uh, they just have not realized that until now because we weren't telling them that story. Thanks, Bob. So you've got a new service for business. Um, I guess two parts to this question. Um, how does the, the, the freeconferencecall.com for business differ from the traditional freeconferencecall.com? And, um, you know, what can, what can a user expect from that service versus their traditional provider? You know, I, I think first and foremost, you know, we've been in business, as I said earlier, for 14 years. And, you know, as you said, have grown to the fourth largest conferencing provider in terms of minute volume in the world. My guess is very few people would have guessed that. And, and I can tell you personally, until I joined the company, um, you know, I've been in the industry for 16 years with, with another company, and I came here, uh, you know, about seven months ago. And until I joined, I, I had no idea this company was as large a as it is. Um, we've executed well over a billion calls, more than 800,000 businesses, and well over 4 million active users. But, but on this free conference call for business offering, I mean, this is our move into the enterprise market where we maintain that free conference calling for all of those enterprise employees, but we charge based on more of a, more of a premium managed services model. Uh, that, that, those premium managers and managed services would include, <clears throat> excuse me, a single corporate bill, 
customized reporting and analytics, you know, a customer success team for account management, rollouts, training, uh, a, a 24 by 7 dedicated customer service. And you can use your own company's brand. You don't need to use the free conference called branding if you don't want to. You can customize your audio greeting, hold music and messaging, visual web conferencing inter interface. And you're also, and, and with all of that, you're able to get all of the conferencing services offered by freeconferencecall.com, including the online meetings with, with optional video conferencing that is, that is coming out in probably, you know, Q3. Um, but also the mobile apps for Android and iOS and, and any of the other premium services. You know, I think a, a, another significant differentiator, you know, I, just to explain this a little further in terms of how we're billing, um, you know, is that, is that billing methodology and how we, you know, allow that customer to, to save significantly on their current conferencing spend. Through this free conference call for business model, we're billing based on a set amount per 100,000 minutes for premium managed services that I, that I talked about. We're not billing for the conference calling. A couple of those, a, a couple of the other differentiators under the free conference call for business brand is, a, is two products that I think are extremely significant that I would really like to, you know, highlight quickly are the free conference call for PBX and free conference call for Microsoft Link. With free conference call for PBX, every company that has a PBX, whether it's on-premise or cloud, can use this service by pointing an extension at an exclusive private label number that we provide that allows up to 100,000 accounts um, that match already existing extension schemes um, and there's really no need to configure this at all. This can be set up in minutes and handle the conferencing demand of the largest global enterprises. The, the conferencing platform is reachable by any phone, soft phone, cell, desk, doesn't matter. Highly secure, high quality, and we're providing that 24 by 7 support. And we're going to send each employee an email with all their conferencing information, simple to use instructions, and you really do start saving incredible amounts of money um, uh, immediately. And then with free conference call for Link, you know, we offer free SIP trunking for Microsoft Link conferencing. Similar to PBX, it's literally in minutes, you're able to set up a SIP trunk for leak completely free of charge. Um, it might appear like this is some sort of a move to, you know, to aid a competitor, but, but it's not. I mean, we know a lot of enterprises are adopting Link, and we also know one issue Link has is the number of customers actually connecting Link outside with SIP trunks and allowing them to utilize Link audio conference calling capability with PSTN callers. So we're doing this for customer. We're, we are doing this for customers today, risk-free, with no contract set up or monthly uh, or monthly fees. Yeah, that's great. So it sounds like, as a, as a minimum, you've got uh, you're on parity with virtually all these services, with a few other additional features. So um, yep. definitely definitely qualified in the enterprise for, for at least at the feature level. So so. Um, a majority, 51% of our survey responses, uh, respondents stated that uh, if conferencing services were 50% of the price of the current service, they would switch. You'd referenced, um, you know, how you how you uh, how you bill, so to speak, uh, for the the business service. Is free conference call for business 50% less than most services? I can give you a very quick answer on that one, and 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 it is yes. I mean. You know, as I mentioned, we have a managed services billing approach for our free business offer. And you can, you can simply go to the for business section at freeconferencecall.com. There's a savings calculator there that will calculate, you know, the monthly and yearly savings based on the monthly minutes you're doing today and the rate you're paying with another provider. And I will tell you the savings are extremely compelling. Um, in addition, unlike some of the other you know, some of the other traditional conferencing providers, we have no minimum fees. We have no surcharges added to the end of your invoice, and we only charge USF on what we're billing you for. So if your bill is significantly reduced using us, your USF charges and all those other charges are significantly reduced um, as well. So, you know, Mark, we, we're, we're able to save significantly over 50% for those customers. Okay. 
So, so the other percentage, almost half, 48%, said, hey, you know, maybe I would switch if it was 50% less, but I'd need to be convinced uh, that the service is equal, equal to or better. And I've got to believe that's a big piece of your job right now as you're entering the enterprise marketplace. Um, how, how does someone become convinced? Uh, what, what, are, what, is, uh, what is your organization doing to help them understand uh, that this is a service they should, should, they should consider? Sure. Well, you, you mentioned earlier, Mark, I mean, you know, What's interesting is that if you combine the 51% on your survey that said yes and the other 48% that said they were open-minded but needed to be convinced, you said it. That's 99% of the respondents who said price is a huge factor. And we know that even that with that initial 51%, they're not going to switch for an inferior product. And I hope everything I explained you know, previously, and you understand that freeconferencecall.com has been about building the best global conferencing platform, services and support, and HD uh, audio conference calling, and, 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 and we've priced other services very aggressively. It's not just about price, though. I mean, it is about the, the, the technology and, 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 and the quality and security of our offering. We've been able to make significant traction into that for business market by not trying to convince customers to do it a different way or use an inferior service to cut cost. Um, and, you know, of course, any individual user can free trial us by using our free conference call serve, conferencing service. But we also allow those companies in, in the, in the for business, you know, in the for business part of our business to test us for free, including the PBX offering and the link offering. Um, and, and we have significant number of tests going on today. I'm going to give you, let me give you a couple examples real quick and then we can wrap up. I mean, you know, we, 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 we uh, have a major university in California that's had users using freeconferencecall.com for years. We've moved them under the free conference call for business part of our business by consolidating all of their many individual users and proving to them that for the business, and, and proving them that, you know, the four business services I mentioned earlier are, are actually what it is, what, what they are. And they are now have, you know, today have moved over 4,000 registered and active users um, under our free conference call for business model. We have a well-known logistics company after 30 days of testing that is deploying our white label solution in two global regions. That's going to save them, you know, 70% over the prior year, uh, their conferencing spend. Another large, well-known silicon. Silicon Valley tech company that's unbundling their audio from a major web conferencing provider due to cost and quality for over 4,000 employees and getting a private label custom virtual bridge with us for audio calls for audio calls only. And then we, you know, we also have a, a, a global publishing company that stands to save over seven million dollars a year by unbundling their audio conference service from a prior UC installation where they're currently overpaying. So. You know, testing or free trialing for us is the best way for an enterprise to get convinced, and we are in testing with over 25 really well-known companies today as part of our for business offering, and we really just launched this offering at Enterprise Connect in, in March, so it's been getting a lot of traction. Yeah, yeah. Great stuff. Good. Well, thank you, Bob. That, that, good insight there. So we're going to go to uh, some, some uh, questions. Uh, if you haven't asked, there's a, a, a bunch of questions queued up right now, which we'll be, be going, going through. But if you haven't asked a question, as I mentioned at the beginning of the, the web conference, uh, on the left-hand side, there's a Q&A uh, area. Uh, just um, put your question there, hit submit, and, uh, and we'll get it. Um, Gareth, uh, this is for Bob. Uh, is there a way to get a larger line over 1,000 seats if necessary? Uh, there, there is, yes. And, you know, we, 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 we can do that today. We, we do that with, uh, we do have that for a number of customers. Um, we actually are going over at, over time, going to formalize that service into a free conference call for event type product. But yes, absolutely. We can do event style conferencing and well over a thousand people. Okay, great. Uh, and then there's a question from Emil. Uh, is there a version of free conference call uh, where uh, basically you can uh, dial in via one click uh, with no, he's asking, no download of the software? Is it possible for participants? No download. I mean, yes. I mean, you, you do not, on our, I mean, I assume you're talking about our online meeting platform. You don't have to, you don't have to download the software. Um, 
you can you you can one click in you know through uh through, through the web and, and get on you don't have to download anything on our, on our online meeting great. service great uh there's the traditional question which you can expect uh, how do you make money if you give the call away for free <laughs> well you know it it I guess the, 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 it, it is a complex t telecom, you know, sort of, you know, system. But you know, essentially, ev any call that is made from just take from one person to another, the carrier who's taking that call and, and terminating that call to another carrier has to pay an access charge to that carrier on the back end. We have agreements with many, many providers, even some of the largest carriers in the world today, that we're, 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 we're able to, um, you know, we have partnership arrangements with them where we're able to share in those, in those charges and then deliver a very high quality service to the customer for, for free. You know, and, and finally, you know, we have, a, you know, again, some of the premium services I mentioned and things like that. We're coming out with a video platform. So there will be some premium services that will be, that will be for, for charge. But, um, again, the conference calling piece of it, you know, we don't see that changing at all. Thank you. So this question is around uh, purchasing of services, and um, are users uh, purchasing services outside of IT? Uh, and I, what I think I heard from you is, is that you're actually beginning to work with IT, where probably the majority of your business has been outside of IT. And uh, then also the question is, is our line of businesses outside of the IT group and end users allocating budget for the, for the business services? Are you, are you beginning to see that yet? Yeah, I mean, well, you, you're right, Mark. I mean, most of our business and, and, and our users have come from outside of IT. Uh, we're actually trying to work closer with IT um, to, to, to win, you know, full company accounts versus business lines within those companies and things like that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're starting to see a lot of traction to work with IT, but most of that business today is definitely, you know, line of individuals or sales departments, marketing departments inside of, uh, inside of an enterprise. I mean, what's interesting, Mark, real quick, I mean, you know, what's interesting is when a large, when, when, when a company get, you know, signs up with a primary or secondary conference provider, oftentimes they don't give accounts to every employee in the company. And the reason they do that, they, like they want to save money. And those guys, those, all right. those people or those divisions are stuck without knowing who their conference service is and not having an account. And they find us. Great. We'll finish up with uh, one, one last uh, question. Uh, this is from Barbara. Um, and she's asking a good question because people don't understand and we need to make sure that it's clear. Um, do they pay uh, per minute uh, for this or do they pay for uh, lo long distance or, or local charges uh, with the service? Do the, the users who dial into a conference, I mean, they're not paying for yeah. the conferencing service. We, we are giving you toll numbers. But again, almost everybody today is on an unlimited dialing plan, toll dialing plan, whether in your office, your home, your mobile device, you're not getting charged for toll minutes. Um, so I would say that if you're not on that plan, yes, you're probably, you are getting charged for toll minutes, but we, we are not finding hardly anybody who is not on some, son, so some sort of unlimited toll plan. And, but there are no charges, per minute charges or anything coming from freeconferencecall.com at all. Yeah, and so just so people understand, for most conferencing services, there's traditionally two major parts of the bill. One is, is the bridging fee, and the other one is the telephony fee. So uh, what Bob's saying basically is, is with a free conference call, you're not paying for audio bridging at all. And the, the telephony component, uh, as it's a, a toll-free dial-in number, is dependent on the plan that you have. Most people in the North American uh, dial plan uh, have a fixed uh, uh, plan whereby uh, it covers all of their calls. So there's no additional fees. So generally, uh, basically, people are, are not having any charges. So there's no per-minute fee that's charged by freeconferencecall.com. Well, uh, 
Uh, it's, it, we're going to wrap up right now. I do thank you for being with us and spending this time with us. Uh, the, uh, there will be a replay that's available. Uh, we'd be happy to, uh, to uh, push that out to you. Um, I would like to thank Bob Wise for joining us today, and uh, we appreciate you taking the, the, this time to, to be with us. If you have any questions, don't hesitate uh, to uh, visit the site, uh, freeconferencecall.com. Uh, there's a, uh, a button at the top that actually says For Business at the top of the website. You click on that, you'll get uh, a little bit more information about uh, trialing the service uh, as well. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll wrap up for now. Take care. Thank you, Mark.